Over the weekend, the unwinnable election was won. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has won the unwinnable election, becoming a Liberal legend, and no one saw it coming. How good is Australia? Bill Shorten was a man clearly in shock. And who could blame him? Almost no one saw this coming. Yes, no one saw it coming. Turns out the guy who lost every preferred Prime Minister poll for years was not our preferred Prime Minister. <laughs> It was an embarrassing night for Australia's leading pundits, who had all tipped a Labor win. I think they're going to get in and get in comfortably. I think, I think it'll be an, easily, an easy majority. Yeah. I, I'm expecting it to fall around 81 or something. Bert, the psychic croc in Darwin, has made the call. Yeah. The photos and the meter dangled <laughs> over him just to... And he chose Bill Shorten. Yeah, you know, Joe and Waleeda hacks, but come on, Bert. <laughs> A crocodile should know when someone's about to be torn apart in far north Queensland. <laughs> of course, Bill Shorten wasn't the only big loser. He told us yesterday he was nervous and Tony Abbott had every right to be, losing the seat he's held for 25 years. I'm caught? counting down three, two, <laughs> one. <laughs> Come on, that felt good, didn't it, Julie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, removing Tony Abbott from his electorate with a pair of ruby shoes, it just screams there's no place like home and they don't like you there either. <laughs> Tony was beaten by Zali Stegall, who, according to one of her campaign heads, had a secret weapon. It was a blank canvas. There is no independent brand, so we developed the colour turquoise in conjunction with psychologists who said this was a great colour for the people who live by the ocean. Sort of neutral, not green, not liberal, somewhere in between. All hail the power of turquoise! <laughs> it doesn't say green, it doesn't say liberal, it says, cheap last-minute gift I bought at a market in Byron. <laughs> Then there was the Senate, the parliamentary equivalent of the Cadbury favourites box, where every bar is a moro. In the Senate, Darren Hinch booted, along with Fraser Anning, following a series of controversies. Uh, someone already counted out of the race is Clive Palmer. Now, he spent $80 million on advertising and he tanked. He tanked? <laughs> now he'll have to go back to his day job, not paying the people who work for him. <laughs> Jackie Lambie will likely make it back into the Senate again and she was looking forward to catching up with her old mates from the Coalition. I'm happy to work with them, um, but there's just so many times with the Liberal Party, those men in the Liberal Party throw me under the bus and be more than happy to basically crap down my throat. I don't know how else to put it. Yeah, and I don't know how else to not imagine it, Jackie. <laughs> Now, like most Australians, after a huge election night, I fell asleep on the couch, snuggled up under my Senate ballot paper. <laughs> but I woke up just in time to catch the weekend's other great exercise in democracy, Eurovision. Now, I was half asleep, and at first I thought that this was just how Anthony Green dresses after midnight. <laughs> but it was just Eurovision doing what Eurovision does best. Outrageous costumes, death-defying stunts, and a bunch of songs that you hope you'll never hear again on the radio. Now, now, I know that not everyone in Australia is into Eurovision, so let me explain it in terms that Australians can understand. Now, the Netherlands entry was a one-man show who made it all about him and ended up winning. So the Netherlands was Scott Morris. <laughs> Madonna was supposed to be the big star of the show but wound up underperforming badly. So she is Bill Shorten. <laughs> now, Iceland's entry was an anti-capitalist BDSM techno-dystopian performance art collective. So naturally, Iceland are the Greens. <laughs> Uh, although their song was called Hate Will Prevail, so maybe they're the far right. <laughs> and finally, Australia. Now, there's no clear reason why we were there, we were never going to win, yet we spent heaps of money just to compete, and all we ended up doing was making polls swing wildly. <laughs> so I hate to inform you, but Australia, we are the Clive Palmer of Eurovision. <laughs> And, of course, one of the biggest stories of the week was the loss of a legend, a personal hero of mine whose influence on Australia and the world cannot be overestimated. Internet meme sensation, Grumpy Cat has died. This morning, heaven got a little grumpier. Tartar sauce, known globally as Grumpy Cat, passed away this week peacefully in the arms of her mommy. Oh, valet Grumpy Cat. And, and I think it goes without saying that anyone who makes their cat go to work today is a bum. <laughs> yeah. 
to sports news and Nick Kyrgios did a Nick Kyrgios. Nick Kyrgios could be suspended by the ATP Tour for his incredible meltdown during his second round match at the Italian Open. The Aussie was given a game penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct where he yelled at a member of the crowd. He then kicked a bottle, smashed a racket and hurled a chair across court. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, I mean serving underarm again. <laughs> I mean, come on, Nick. A true, a true champion like Roger Federer would never do that. When he throws a chair, he does it properly. <laughs> but no one was more fired up about Nick's meltdown than media commentator Prue McSween. He should be banned for a couple of years at least. He should have been slapped as a child. He's a spoiled little Greek brat who's probably being treated like a prince. Well, I don't think it's got anything to do with being, being Greek. Greek. Well, I love Greeks. I yes, will say yeah, I love I the Greeks. We all love <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, but I'm just saying, the Greeks do spoil their kids a bit. Do oh, they? Oh, and awesome. my apologies to the Greeks. I don't want Greeks going. I love souvlaki's. No, I like the Greek <laughs> Greeks. Yes, and, and it remains to be seen whether or not the Greeks will accept her apology. <laughs>